Hi everyone, we're back here. And as most of you know, yesterday wasn't the best days. We lost someone who I didn't know so well, but I did spend the day with him in Los Angeles last summer. And I just fell in love with what he projected as a person, as a father, as a, as a husband. He was so genuine and he was just great to be around. You know, there are those people that you just, you don't need to know them so well. It's enough a few minutes and you know, or a few hours and it's, and you know that they are just genuinely good people. And he has this amazing, incredibly strong wife who I, I don't know what she's going through now, what she's thinking, but Adam's death really put me at the edge yesterday for many reasons. For the last eight months is really whenever I was about to crash or I had a bad day, I turned to Adam and I felt obliged to actually smile because I thought if he can smile all the time and he's projecting all these positive energies, even from the hospital between two camos, then my issues are not issues. And it's something very human that we do. We only appreciate things when we are in pain or we are in trouble or in comparison to other people suffering. But what really puts me at the edge all the time when good people go away is religion. And I think both Christianity and Judaism says that we shouldn't worry because, and not we shouldn't worry, but God knows better that things happen and we are so small as human beings that we just don't understand the big picture. And I don't think that this is true. And I was always having trouble with that. Yes, it can calm us down in situations that, you know, you didn't get that job. God knows better. He has a bigger plan for you. Yes, that can calm you down. But what if you lose someone who you think should be still here? Where is the big picture? Where is, where is the big plan? I'm not sure I see that. So I have a, a rabbi whose books I'm reading really endlessly, and he is Harold Kushner, who is a conservative rabbi, but in my reading he's very liberal. And he is the first one who gave me a God picture, a God image, and a concept of religion and God that I can actually accept. And this post might, you know, not resemble with everybody, but it might help others who struggle with, you know, imagining God as the old person, old father sitting up in the skies, looking at us down and deciding who is good, who is bad, who should live, who should die. I never really believed in God like this. And this is why I tend to pray very informally. I don't really like dogmas in religion and it has a different story. But so yesterday night, I uh, looked up um, a video with him where he talks about the book, uh, When Good People Die. And um, he lost his son at a very, very early age. That's the book about. And it's very, actually it's hundred something pages, but he said it significantly changed his life and the death of his son. He was a rabbi, but he questioned if he can continue to be a rabbi. Because what all the community kept on telling him that, you know, God knows better, it, God has a bigger picture, and he just couldn't uh, put with it anymore. And um, the other thing is that he felt guilty. Because if he really goes with the mainstream God picture that God decides who deserves to leave and who not, and he says, what did I do? Or like he felt guilty about something that he must have done that God took away his kid. And the God picture that he eventually found for himself, and he is referring to the Torah at some point that he was reading it over and over again, and then he got um, enlightened in, in some section, and that's what actually made him write a book, is that God is not someone who tells you, okay, you die and you leave. But God is actually giving you the strength. So God is itself the strength to forgive. 
God itself is the love that you get from other people. So he says that when you are in the hospital, you are not going to get out of the hospital because of the prayers and not because God will decide tomorrow that you can leave or not. But what God gives you, that God sends you those people and love and care and the doctors who are trying to cure you. He says biology is, is something and God is something else and sickness is one thing and God is something else. So God is actually giving you the strengths to cope with the issues or the challenges, the obstacles that life puts on you. And I think this God picture is something that is very relatable, something that you can, you can actually believe in. Because I'm sure we all had periods in life when we didn't know how we actually went through that situation. And if you think back, that is kind of reassuring that in every situation you find the strength in you, somewhere deep inside, something that you never actually knew that exists. And that is actually God. That is something I can I can believe in. So that gave me uh, strength and helped me to actually accept that good people also go. And eventually we, we all go. It is just difficult to understand why, why certain people go. And then today I read something on Facebook. Adam had the funeral today. So one of the attendees posted something that happened six, seven months ago. He talked with Adam and Adam said that I could elaborate on the question, like, why me? Why me? Why am I in the hospital? But he was, it was not in his character. He didn't think like that. So the only thing he says is like, who am I? Why not me? And if he was able to think like that, again, who am I? to crash down and question why he had to go. I just from afar wish strength to the family, to his wife, to his kids, and to the whole community that he actually built up during the last eight months. And for those of you who didn't uh, follow his journey, you need to know that he made an extremely, extremely powerful campaign online to find a match, but not only for him, he actually raised money that those matches that they find can can be actually used to save other lives. So altogether, he saved 11 lives and eventually he got his match also. But unfortunately, his body um, rejected it. And as the closing part, I think if we don't believe in God or in and you can name it however, I was never really attached that we can only give, name it God, It can you can name it the universe, the energy, but I think God is not something that um, should have a negative connotation, which is often is the case when you are talking with not religious people. But if you don't believe in some kind of higher power, especially in hard times, and even if that higher power is actually within us, then what else is left? What else can give us hope? What else can give us faith? And that is, that is religion about, for me, to have a faith in something, have a faith that we're going to go through every challenges that, or every challenge that we face in life. 